So part three, um, Lundy Island to Padstow, or at least um, the plan was to sort of anchor up outside uh, just around the corner from Padstow and then go into Padstow uh, sometime the next day, hopefully in the daylight. Um, fantastic weather forecast for the day, absolute perfect sailing conditions. Had it have stayed that way it would have been absolutely perfect, it was still a lovely day, but um, goodbye Lundy, let's go on to the next adventure. Right, so this is quite literally not too bad at all. Um, steady winds, which is supposed to be about that for the rest of the day, 12 knots. Um, 3.4 knots through the water. Um, Five point three speed over ground, and I'm actually aiming for landfall a bit where the red line is going. So, yeah, very happy with, with this. And sea feather working absolutely fine. Now I don't know if you can see the third baton, which is the one, it's the sort of line just underneath the number 39. Um, it's kind of working, um, it's a bit straighter, it's not as bendy or flexible as the other ones, but I'm relatively pleased with that. Um, when it fell out, and I did actually manage to sail that day, the, the, um, the sail was flapping around all over the place, so um, although it's a bit rubbish and a bit temporary, it's certainly better than nothing, so I'm relatively pleased about that. Um, but I, you, might, you might not be able to see it, but I can see it's definitely, definitely too straight and not bendy enough. Um, anyway, we'll put that down as a minor success, I think. Well, oh well. This is so relaxing and nice, certainly compared with the, um, the trip up from uh, Blue Anchor to Oxwich. I could literally do this all day. Actually, I'm going to do this all day. I don't have a choice. I am going to do this all day. I do sometimes have to move though, because this this rope here, I sort of, if I need to adjust the steering, I just pull sort of a centimetre and it adjusts the sea feather. So it's not all laziness. You know, I am actually doing a bit of graft here. And it's just delightful. Gosh, this is this is actually what it's supposed to be like. It's not always, but it just um, when it happens, it's just great. Um, steady winds, exactly the right strength. Um, sea is is lovely. It's not warm, but it's yeah, as you can see, it's sunny and, and pleasant. So you can't plan for a day like this, but when a day like this does happen, you just have to. Um, grab it with both hands. Anyway, um, I better sign off now because I've got a lot to do. I think I might need to tweak this a little bit. I'm not sure. No, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I don't want to overdo it. Sorry, I nearly forgot but it wouldn't be a sailing video without a dolphin in it, would it? So, um, you have no idea how much it costs to hire these things for the hour. Okay, so heading into Port Quinn Bay, um, which is where I'm going to anchor overnight tonight and then pop round the corner tomorrow to um, Padstow. It was too tricky to try and make it to Padstow today. I would have had to sort of leave at 3 o'clock in the morning or something like that. 
Um, as you can see, the weather conditions are slightly different than the engines are. Uh, what happened is the wind just completely died um, about halfway here. It's about 40 miles altogether, so after about 10 bit miles it just sort of died. Um, turned the engine on for a bit, um, motored. Uh, the wind did then come back up um, and it's got stronger and stronger but unfortunately it's from dead on the nose so um, uh, that wasn't really a goer and it's getting stronger and stronger. Um, it's 21 knots at the moment. Uh, we're beating a little bit of tide so we're doing 3.9 knots through the water and 3.5 over the ground. So we are heading into tide a little bit. I'm going to get to um, up Hawkwind Bay uh, at about high tide um, and the wind the nice thing is that the wind is coming from the sort of south east so it should be a pretty sheltered bay although at the moment it looks a bit rocky doesn't it <laughs> so um, yeah it would have been nice if it would have stayed the way it was all day that would have been a jolly pleasant sail but actually it was a jolly pleasant sail so anyway Right, so slight change of plan at the moment. Um, I'm actually heading off back out because the uh, the wind got up quite considerably to about um, 25 knots, and the sea was getting worse as I was closing into shore. And although it was coming more or less off uh, the coast, it was yeah. I just it just looked as if I was going towards rocks and, and danger and stuff. So um, I've got plenty of time, plenty of sea room. If I have to stay out here all night, then that's absolutely fine. It was supposed to be about 12 knots, um, but anyway, let me. It's what I've done. I've just got a tiny little bit of jib out. Sea feather. It's probably the best invention in the world. Is just absolutely fine. I've tried to sort of set it into comfortable mode. Um, these seas, I mean, they don't look too bad, but if you're kind of going the other way with the engine, which is what I was doing, um, then they're pretty horrific, to be quite honest. So, um, yeah, so, so if you can see in the background, um, I'll have to go up there and go back. Um, oops. So I might turn around and go back there later. Um, so at the moment I'm not particularly going anywhere except to try and stay comfortable um, and uh, keep away from the rocky bits because they're always the bits that hurt, aren't they? And there's so uh, tons of stuff. I've just come 40 miles, I'm just going back almost exactly on the same track that I've just come 40 miles on. Oh well, the worst things happen at sea as they say. Right, um, yeah, we just have a, a few things sort of fell over because it got pretty rough out there. So I'm just going to have a, and I am clipped, I need to be clipped on actually in the cockpit just now. I couldn't film it because I didn't want to wreck another camera. Um, so let's just go and see what the damage is. It's difficult to describe how rocky and rolly it is. Uh, I've kind of tried to set things up for comfort. I actually found that by letting a little bit more sail out so that I wasn't quite being overtaken by the swell so much. Um, and with the wind a bit more behind me. And <laughs> I'm not on commission, but this is a great advert for the sea feather because she is just, I call her she, I haven't given her a name, I'm just going to call it Sea Feather. Uh, so the wind steering, she's just doing a sterling job. Um, and as I say, it's always difficult, you know, on video, it, it never quite looks as, as horrible. But going in the other direction, which was just now, was pretty nasty. Now I've, because I'm near shore, I can, I've got internet access and I'm just going to have a look at any what the latest sort of weather things are and see what the options are for me. If I need to stay up all night, I can do. The next um, time that I can get into Padstow 
not in this sort of weather, obviously. Next time I'm going to Pasto is. Uh, I can't read upside down, this is terrible of me. Uh, about three in the morning. So if needs be, I'll stay out up until three o'clock in the morning. Um, not quite the way the, the day started, and not quite what I was expecting, but. Um, So here's an update. Um, well, the wind's kind of died down to about 14 at the moment, um, so that's probably about 16 because obviously the wind's coming from behind me. So um, <coughs> I've just managed to have a quick look on the internet, and none of the none of the winds that <laughs> 25 miles an hour wasn't mentioned anywhere. Um, so I think that might have been a sort of a local thing. Um, and it seems that the sea state was getting worse as I was getting close to the shore, so obviously not a sensible thing to go and anchor up there. Now the problem with getting into Padstow is you need to be at the entrance two hours before high water. Uh, the next high water is at five o'clock in the morning, and then the one after that is sort of later in the afternoon. Now what I had planned to do, based on the... Um, uh, the weather forecast that I had um, prior to going to Lundy and then on the radio at Lundy is to anchor up just outside Padstow but as I was getting closer it was just looking more and more I felt like I was kind of just driving serenity into the rocks and um, that's only going to end one way isn't it so um, as you can see from the from the sea behind me it's kind of rolly and whatever because that's typical Bristol Channel or whatever. I've tried different um, wind directions and so on and this is about the most comfortable. At least it's not sharp and sort of bashing into, into stuff. So um, I think the plan is now, because obviously I can stay out, I don't mind, I'll stay out all night if I have to um, and catch the um, five o'clock tide. So the current <coughs> plan for, <coughs> excuse me, current plan is I will hang about out here. I'm literally doing almost exactly the same track. I just, I've just i been here, I recognise this bit of water, I've been here before. So I'm literally just going back the way I came. Um, actually this is, a, this, this is a nice sail. If it had been like this, perhaps with the water not quite so swelly. But in the Bristol Channel you get that swell and then you get the funny chop with it and so on. It's really difficult to just sort of set a specific course because I've got water coming that way, I've got it coming that way, it's, and then it kind of gets mixed up. And then you get one of those. And there's not an awful lot you can do about it. And when you do get one of those, as you can see from the stuff in the back, it's, it's kind of just all over the place. So the good news is the weather forecasters say the wind's dying down and down and down, gradually. Um, and they're also predominantly south. So if I can get back an anchor, I will. I'm tempted to just stay out until three o'clock in the morning, to be quite honest, and then um, go into, into Padstone, because the winds are pretty much southern then, and down to about eight knots, and that's pretty much ideal for getting in. And um, the good thing about three o'clock in the morning is there's nobody around to see you messing it up, um, unless I remember to video it, and then of course it's, it's you guys. So. Um, yeah, sorry about that, but um, you know, it's, it's always safer out at sea, isn't it? This, um, actually, it's a really nice evening. <laughs> it's very pleasant. There's another, but I can actually see there were two boats as I was coming in. They were coming out, and I could kind of, um, I mean, they were, they were dots, so I couldn't see them, but I could kind of feel the, the, the shocked look, thinking, what's this guy doing motoring straight against the wind into this? And I can see one of them way over in the distance. So I'm going to try and figure out where he's heading for because there isn't, there, there literally isn't anywhere until you get to, um, I don't know, Wilford I'm going to have a look on the map and, and see what, what that, this is the trouble, you're so exposed out here, this is where you need to get the, get the weather right, but um, 
as I say, whatever happens, I can heave to. I know it's not going to be a false eight or anything because they've, they've not, you know, there's no storm, there's, there's nothing really horrible that's going to happen. Um, it's just a pain in the neck. But um, I think the important thing to do is to eat. The important thing is always to eat. So there you go. I um, might give you an update later. Who knows? <laughs> or I might even stop this episode right here so that you have to figure out what's happening next time. Uh, would I be that cruel? I probably would actually. So there you go. We'll have to wait and find out what happens next time. Um, I think this video was, was long enough. It was still an enjoyable day and you know what? You have to have contingencies. Plans do change and let's see what sort of decisions um, I make next. Uh, Tune in next time.